So, uh, dear Scott, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I must congr congratulate Isakos and Aspetar to making this uh, meeting, uh, two days meeting on football injuries possible, and also to have this session on cartilage. Uh, so, my part is to talk about cartilage injuries in football, epidemiology and trauma mechanism. And here are my disclosures. Uh, football, as you have heard, is the most popular sport with more than 300 million uh, players. And as more and more people take part in football, you will see more injuries. And if you look upon injuries to articular cartilage service in general in athletes, 36% of them have uh, injuries and you have more injuries with a higher BMI and also in certain playing positions. We have heard little about data collections and there is problems with data collection regarding the cartilage uh, uh, epidemiology because there are collections from different clubs, different levels of the club, different collectors. And Volpe that recently uh, released a book on uh, football uh, uh, injuries he said that it would be better that you have one type of clinicians doing the data because as it is today, there are different types of, of collectors. Uh, UEFA have done a lot of studies on uh, uh, sport injuries and especially on football. And Valden, that was cited before uh, today, uh, found that there was the most common injury was tight strains followed uh, 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 by uh, the posterior strains being significantly more common than anterior ones, but no information about cartilage injuries. And the type of injury that uh, was presented was overuse or traumatic, and the cause of the injury, uh, the direction of the injury was contusion and sprain, and you could think about contusion as causing cartilage injuries, maybe also sprain indirectly. Location most common as we heard, tight, followed by the knee, groin, and ankle. Also, with a uh, number of cartilage injuries in the joint, you will have a risk of developing OA, and the results have shown that you have a 12-fold increased risk of developing e uh, OA in the athletes, uh, particularly at elite level. Looking uh, for uh, frequencies of cartilage injuries, as I said, it's very difficult to find any information about it. So we have something to do for the future in research. You have to go into American football, certainly different compared to, uh, to soccer or European football. But there was a report on full thickness cartilage defects in 17% of the elite players, and the lateral compartment being uh, the, uh, the one that was at greatest risk and previous surgery, particularly meniscectomy, was associated with these lesions. Soccer is also the sport that most frequently gives rise to ankle injuries that may cause post-traumatic ankle arthritis. And one study is quoting 33% of injured ankles will develop OA after 25 years of follow-up. Studies report also a higher incidence of OA in former soccer players compared to age match controls. And if you look upon elite soccer players and compare that with the amateurs, the elite soccer player was three times more common compared to, uh, to non-elite players with hip OA. Well, joint uh, injuries are quite common in the athletic population and certainly uh, especially in the professional soccer player, with 10 to 36 percent injuries per uh, thousand hours. And most soccer injuries uh, is on the knee, uh, followed by the ankle. And as I said, osteoarthritis is developed uh, by time, uh, up till 12 times more frequent than in the general population. And also important, appears quite early, four to five time, uh, years earlier compared to the normal population. So it remains a major cause of disability in this type of sport. But if you look what happens after a game, there is no good information. There is only one study to say that the single game of soccer has not been shown to directly result in increased cartilage breakdown products. 
that was done some years ago, so that is something that we need to look for more in the future, and that could be possible maybe here in Aspetar. The articular cartilage surface can be damaged through sports participation via single or repetitive single impact, and the hip and knee joints are the two main locations that may develop OA. So, normal articular cartilage also has the ability to adjust after the level of activity. So have you, if you have increased weight bearing, you will see that the cartilage will become thicker and thicker. And in the healthy athlete, there is a positive linear dose responsive relationship between these repetitive loading activities and articular cartilage function. Injury to articular cartilage in the knee is reported in 63% of atroscopies and the majority of them are associated with other injuries as ligament injuries, ACL injuries, uh, and meniscal lesions, and not so often as a single uh, uh, entity. If you look upon the type of lesion, you could have focal lesion, you could have degenerative lesion. The focal lesions are characterized that they have a well demarcated uh, defect uh, caused by trauma, osteoconditis desiccans, osteonecrosis, while degenerative defects are more poorly demarcated and usually caused of ligament insufficiencies, meniscal injuries, malalignment, and also arthritis. But it's extremely important to remember that degeneration is not the same as osteoarthritis. You could have a degeneration for sure in, in osteoarthritis, but the degeneration could be something that is before the development of OA. Then you have chondral lesion, you have osteochondral lesion. The chondral fracture could be a loose piece of, uh, of cartilage in the joint, or it could be a little fissure that you have to palpate and find uh, as an injury. <clears throat> and you could also have different types of cystic development. You could have a small fissure, and the synovial fluid will go through uh, the fissure into the subchondral bone and make it like a grotto, uh, what you see by the sea. Uh, it could be an intact surface that had developed a cyst via a fracture of the trabeculae and by time a cystic development. Rotational forces are uh, important. The shearing forces create a stress fracture through the cartilage matrix and sometimes through the subchondral bone. Uh, and there you could see the fissure, and it could be very, very little uh, that you see on the surface, so you have to palpate it, and you notice better by atroscopy than by uh, uh, imaging. Patella dislocations leads to osteochondral fractures, uh, and through this mechanism, uh, and is re responsible for 40 to 50 percent of the osteochondral injuries in the uh, femoral condyle. So it's <coughs> quite common that if you have an osteochondral injury, it's caused by a patella dislocation or subluxation. Also, cartilage injury due to meniscal loss and by that degeneration of cartilage, or instability uh, by wear and tear and degeneration. In the healthy athlete, there is a positive linear dose lin uh, response relationship between the repetitive loading and articular cartilage function, but there is a threshold where you exceed and go over the threshold, you will have a negative effect on cartilage. High impact joint loading above the safety threshold decreases the proteoglycans and uh, increases level of negative enzyme, and this trauma could also uh, cause the death of the chondrocyte, so-called chondrocyte apoptosis. So we could see two different pathways that the cartilage could be injured in the uh, athlete, in the soccer player. You could have chronic repetitive loading, which gives a progressive articular cartilage degradation, or you could have acute trauma uh, with a defect in the cartilage, and or ultrastructural injuries to the cartilage with disruption of the uh, chondral and cartilage matrix. So major cause for disability and retirement from the sport could be seen, uh, uh, and besides causing loss of playing time, progressive articular cartilage degeneration and osteoarthritis occurs in up to 32% of football players and is a major cause for disability and retirement from this sport. Uh, finally, I think 
prevention that will be discussed further on during this Scottish session, but we heard earlier uh, Andrea Serner talking about videotaping of groin injuries, and in Norway they have also done videotaping of ankle injuries, uh, and uh, they found that the majority of the ankle injuries were able to identify on the video resulted from contact with an opponent and an inversion mechanism was found in all but one of the tackling injuries, all running injuries, and in one of two of landing after heading dual. So this type of video uh, uh, information is quite important in order to prevent the sprain, and if you could prevent the sprain, you could also prevent cartilage injury in the ankle joint, and the same if you do video recording on the knee joint, to get more knowledge how to prevent the players to get these type of injuries. And they also put up uh, this type of, of uh, uh, algorithm that you could look upon a predisposed athlete, a susceptible, a susceptible uh, athlete, and by that you could uh, give the trainers the idea how to get the uh, players uh, in, in a prevention mood. Future studios, uh, uh, for, uh, for the trauma mechanism in soccer is important. We should look upon the grass that they are playing on, the artificial groundwork, uh, improve uh, the shoe quality, uh, maybe thinking about bone, uh, patella bone or quadriceps tendon instead of hamstrings for female players. Training focus on what is known from the trauma mechanism, exactly what I talked about, the video mechanism, and also maybe follow the players by a biomarker screening to see if there's a tendency that they go over the threshold, and that means that the cartilage could be in danger. And in that sense, maybe the player should take, uh, be taken off for a while and monitored extra carefully. Uh, about trauma mechanism, nothing is really new, and I thank you very much for your attention.